What is up you sexy YouTube mother lovers? We are back here on the range, taking a dive into my personal collection to bring you something that you guys have been requesting for, for some reason. Voila! The Tokarev, the TT-33, the Russian boomer pistol. This bad boy is a semi-automatic handgun chambered in 762 by 25. Really hot pistol round. So anyways, you guys said you wanted to see a little bit of a breakdown on how this thing works, see a little bit of shooting with it, and that's what we're gonna do today. It's that's what we do here, but not before we have a quick montage. Go. My magazine runneth dry. Time to talk about the TTs. You know what I mean. But first, let's talk about D-Bags. Specifically, the big D-Bag. The D-Bag is full of just all around cool guy shit that you might actually use and not just throw away or stuff in a closet somewhere like a lot of the other subscription box companies. And now they're rolling out even more options for you guys with the basic bag, the pop bag, and of course, the big D-Bag. I know I, for one, am super excited to see what they do over the next couple months. I think they're headed in an interesting direction. So if you want to check them out, go ahead and check the link down in the description and in the pinned comment, show them a little bit of love. We appreciate their support. Come back to the Tokarev. So now let's do a quick breakdown of why the Tokarev is basically the Soviet 1911. First off, unrelated to the operating system, which is kind of funny, you have eight rounds, just like the 1911. Some say seven, uh, but they are purists and we don't talk to them. But what really makes this the Soviet 1911 is the operating system is basically identical. So you have a hammer fired, short recoil operated, tilting barrel mechanism, exactly like the 1911. It came 19 years later, so worth pointing out. Russian engineers in the early 20th century copying other engineers? What? Come on. While the Tokarev leaves a lot to be desired in way of sights, of grip angle, <laughs> amongst other things, uh, kind of snappy recoil, it actually makes up for in a couple of things that I think are kind of neat. For one, they actually simplified the trigger mechanism. So instead of the uh, really intricate 1911 trigger, this actually has a trigger pack, basically, that uh, very, very, very simplified compared to the early 1911s of the day. It's also got kind of a funky safety here. So if you, you know, run the slide, Pull the trigger, hammer goes all the way forward, but if you put it at half cock there, your trigger's dead and your slide is locked. So, kind of interesting. I'm not sure if I like that or not, but it's neat, it's different. Also, like we talked about, has a spicier round. We have basically a snubby rifle round. We've talked about it on the channel before, 762 by 25 It's like the OG Boomer 5.7. Pistol round, but smaller diameter with kind of a, a rifle caliber uh, shaped casing there, a little bit less so on the 762 by 25 than the 5.7, but still kind of along that vein, and very high velocity, which is why this will actually punch through a lot of soft body armor, especially when you're shooting it out of something like a PPS 43 or a PPS H41. I'm working on it. If you want to see the videos we're going to do on those, make sure you click subscribe and uh, hit that notification bell so you can actually see it and get notified. But with 762 by 25, especially nowadays, uh, you get kind of some subpar surplus ammo floating around out there like just the top round in our magazine here perfect example i don't know how well you can see that but it's not even crimped necessarily it's just kind of dimpled on four corners there and some some of these rounds have a massive just crack already the casing is already split this is just polar surplus ammo and just ended up with a few crates of these i knew i was gonna have a ppsh 41 to feed so <laughs> gonna bought a few of these. But even with that kind of questionable ammo, as you can see, this thing just chugs along beautifully. Tokarev don't give a fuck. There's a lot of variants of the Tokarev out there. Some of them are uh, Russian, Chinese, Yugoslavian. This one in particular is Romanian. See here you've got the RPR star there on the grip. This thing that uh, looks like a hostess zinger. And on this side here, you can see it was made in 1953. That's just cool. That's, I guess, what I like about a lot of these surplus pistols. That's why I like just collecting them when I can and stuff, is that there's there's always a history behind it. Modern manufactured stuff, it has to be really cool to do anything for me. It's not like there's many guns out there I actively don't like. It's just there's a lot I don't care about. Stuff like this, 
they have a story. I think that's cool. Want to shoot shit with it? So now we're going to see what the 7.62x25 out of a Tokarev pistol will do to my two most hated White Claw flavors. They were out of political prisoners, so I don't have to do. Children these days have no appreciation. This is what real stopping power looks like. <laughs> Smells like fruity bullshit. Well, to the surprise of no one, 7.62x25 ripped straight through those and kept on going. Probably had a lot of energy left too. That's partially what this barrel delay system is good for, is you can get a much higher power cartridge out of a pistol versus if you had it direct blowback, like say the Makarov. Love the Makarov to death, still my baby. 9x18 is not nearly as powerful as 7.62x25, and that's because the Makarov is direct blowback versus this one short recoil tilting barrel. Now I made the joke in the past that the grips on this Tokarev look like a hostess zinger, cause come on, they, they totally do. Went by Food Lion, couldn't find any of those, but could find Twinkies, so. Let's see what a Tokarev does to Twinkies. Tallahassee, look away. So I set it up here, let's try to shoot it lengthwise, see if we can shoot the cream right out the middle. Reddit's gonna have a field day. did. So almost a perfect shot. I hit a little low and right. It's kind of hard to tell when you're that close. Iron sights like where they're zeroed in and where the you know height over bore and everything. But so I was a little low there, but it split right down the middle and just canoed this Twinkie and exited out the other side. There's a hole in the plastic there. But that that is your perfectly sliced Twinkie. And if it wasn't for the 1960s Polish lead, it'd probably be good to eat still. I, I come to think of it, I don't actually know what's in a normal Twinkie, so probably just about as dangerous. So now we're just left with this big box of Twinkies, and I'm still kind of on that diet, so we can't have that laying around. Got to get rid of it with extreme prejudice. Later. Tango down. So yeah, Tokarevs are neat little trash cats. I like them a lot. There's a lot of history to them, so it's kind of neat. Again, not the most ergonomic of pistols, especially not in a modern context, but for the time, pretty neat. Hopefully you guys learned something from the video, and if you didn't, hopefully you were at least entertained. If you want to help support the channel, you can check out our merch down at Bunker Branding. Links are in the description in the pinned comments. It's getting cold out. Rep an AK guy hoodie in style. Let everybody know you got a shitty taste in YouTube content. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today. Appreciate you watching the end, and as always, I will see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Bye-bye. What is up, you sexy YouTube mother lovers? Today we're back here on the range, and I uh, took a... Oh, fuck. It's a hammer fired short recoil operated tilting bolt fuck not tilting bolt tilting barrel well where this really becomes the soviet 1911 is the operating mechanism is basically identical and that audio is going to be fucked thank you thank you helicopter keeping us free russian engineers in the early 19th century copying other engineers what come on man 19th century 19th, oh fuck yeah sorry i mean they probably did then too and I guess that's what I like the most about these surplus pistols is that, uh, you know, unlike a lot of the stuff that's manufactured, mm, fuck. Now I'm still on that diet, so even though we did what we needed with that one, that sounds awful, we did what we needed with that one Twinkie.